<laughs> so welcome to this our 34th film bit crazy i don't know we almost did this now three years with a film uh, and a pattern every month and uh, i don't know but flies are changing there are new materials coming in and it seems we can go on forever and uh we have uh, yet another year planned so um those of you who like it we'll see quite a few new things happening here um where should we start this start with a bit of coffee of course but uh, i think maybe um a few words on running a company like this for the flies we try to be innovative we try to move things forward we try to find new materials with better qualities and it's by I've been searching for that all my life and um, one thing I found out now <clears throat> is trying to run a company doing this is that it's easier to come up with the ideas than to actually get the production going and then I've been uh, fooled I don't know how many times on when things should arrive the new uh, the uh, tail fiber, our uh, tag tinsel, our cutters and uh, the jungle cock and it seems like uh, it's probably like that in all businesses but it seems like when you uh, get a promise it's not worth uh, uh, the way that I think my promises <laughs> I try to keep my promises but okay a lot of talk but I'm going to show you again one thing uh, trying to maybe fooling you but uh, we did uh, packs like this leather packs uh, we call them wild salmon leather packs they are part of our SOS uh, and uh, they are made for packing stuff not only fly time but uh, uh, I use this for my t-shirts and, and uh, my um, socks and underwear when I'm traveling and I have another one that I use for all my uh, uh, leaders leader materials and tips one side and these are now coming out and listen I've been promised that we will have it before Christmas and actually this company has been holding their promises so I think we will have this before Christmas three sizes this is the large one a medium burgundy and a small orange one and um, I'm super happy with this maybe I'm a bit kinky but I like the leather stuff so tying okay so uh, today we're gonna do something different Last month we dyed Flumpluga, a big orange bright and um, many, many people think it's terrible. I think it's fantastic You see it swim. Today I'm going to tie something completely different. I'm going to tie a small clear water for the fly. Uh, I call it Greenlander. It's a uh, it's got the inspiration, or I got the inspiration doing this pattern from the Green Islander, of course, but also from the Silver Grey. And uh, I fished, I used to fish back in the 80s, a lot of Green Islanders, and then I started to fish Silver Greys, and I started to merge these two patterns into to one. And um, now I fish, or at last, 20 years I've been fishing this version that I call Greenlander so I'm gonna tie this for you now and we'll see completely different and uh, still same thoughts and ideas behind getting a fly that really swims and catch a lot of fish coffee and what are we gonna do here now we're gonna tie this you think it's pretty clean here on the table and that's because I just came home from doing a demonstration southern part of Sweden and uh, brought everything with me I'm gonna tie this on our uh, medium uh, I'm gonna tie it a little bigger now than I, I, I fish it most of the time 
Uh, I'm gonna tie on a two and a half centimeter. Let's see what I have my stuff. Two and a half centimeter chartreuse medium and uh, uh, chartreuse extra small. Take the medium and I do the same as I always do. I cut an angle. Put, uh, you can put them together before you put it on the needle, but uh, I think it's easier to put the medium on and then you put the extra small on and you press it until it starts to grow on the needle and then you press the medium on there. These kind of flags I tie with two different threads. I'm going to tie the white one today. And actually the white thread is the one I use for most of my flies. Uh, when I look on how, how many spools on every color, each color I use, uh, I use most white. But I also use on these clear water flies, I also use our stealth thread uh, that is um, almost invisible. But today I'm going to do like I do most of the time. I'm going to do it with our white thread. And I use a 12 o and I start by putting these two tubes together like that and uh, was actually on my way to change things for you here because uh, I have the uh, the ladder table cover the beige one the light one under and it's always better when you tie light flies to have a darker background so I was going to change it but I was too lazy so we'll hope I'll see what I do and that the fly will turn out good Okay, I start with Mirage like I do uh, uh, on almost mo all my flies. When I tie it in, I stretch it a little bit. And it's a good thing with the Mirage that it is really stretchable. Um, the thing is that it, it loses some some of the, the good... Uh, color it get when you stretch it if you stretch it too much so just a little bit so you get a strong fly okay those of you following us knows that i've been working with this we call tail fiber and here we go again i have a new sample uh, uh, of a new material that i'm uh, trying and i'm going to tie with it now it's kind of a crafts fur. Uh, it's thinner. It's got a really nice color to it. And it's quite translucent. You can see how thin the fibers are. And uh, I'm gonna do this the same I do with everything. We need. really need to try it before we actually put things on the market. I tie it in and I tie it in uh, close down to the mirage. This, when I cut this, if you want to have an even body, it's better to cut it that way than this way. So I can hold this up and I can cut this a little bit like this. I get some fibers to follow under the thread when I go front and I'm not going to get this. Um, hard tapering so you see if i just move down my thread this will disappear under okay so back down the thread and i'm gonna work with uh, two of our braids i'm in love with our hollow braid i think it's the best bottom material there is uh, i use more hollow braid than regular braid and i use them for all sizes of flies and I use them for for both ribbings and uh, and uh, and uh, tinsel bodies. And I start by tying in the one I'm gonna have for my uh, ribbing, and then yes, the other one on top. Uh, back down the thread, move the thread forward, take this one, and look where I have my my uh, mirage so i really cover up all the thread before i start working this to the front 
And the thing is that uh, the good thing with our uh, braid is that this SSS braid is so thin that you can overlap it and you can create a body that is actually tapering, um, which looks a lot better, I think. Okay, now you've seen me uh, use glitz on most flies. Uh, today I'm gonna take from our dubbing dispenser our regular dubbing. And there are how many dubbings on the market? One billion dubbings. Uh, I was in love with, uh, with seal's fur, which is really shiny, translucent. So when I made uh, our dubbing, uh, this is built on a totally translucent fiber that is dyed. And then we mix it with different uh, flash fibers to, to get what we want. And this color is actually called Greenlander Green. It's made for this fly. And uh, I use the dubbing on smaller flies and glitz on bigger flies. But it's also like this that uh, it's perhaps better to use dubbing on flies that you want to be really uh, translucent because of the fiber here. The light will go straight through this and it will um, not disappear, but it will be uh, give a very translucent appearance, appearance when the fly is ready. And I take a little bit at a time, work my thread through the dubbing, make sure that I have three or four millimeters uh, of um, medium tubing and don't go, go too far front, three or four mil, so I can build most of my fly right on this part. It's gonna be a much stronger fly. Okay, hackles. Bragging about that stuff here. Uh, this is our medium SOS, and I think it's a perfect way of of having uh, hackles. They are, it's easy to see and they are kept in perfect conditions there. Okay, I'm gonna do a silver badger. I love silver badgers because you can, uh, this one right over here, you can dye them. Uh, and I used to dye everything myself. Now you can get these super nice uh, dyed silver badgers in all different colors. Uh, but the natural feather is perhaps the most beautiful. Take the feather, make sure I have a feather with uh, uh, what I think is the right length of fibers and I tie it in and I tie it in underneath. And I do one turn, like you perhaps seen me do before, before I start working my feather back over the body. And uh, since I don't hackle all the body, I don't hackle the mirage and I don't hackle the bare tube in the back, I do four turns. I think doing five turns, which is the classic way of doing on, on all flies, is uh, it's being too much hackle. And um, those of you who know your classic tying knows that the yellow and green body comes from the green highlander and the silver bad, your hackle, comes from silver gray. So it's good to steal the good things or maybe not steal, maybe just combine them. So I wind this and I cross over. Uh, if I wind hackles and ribbing same way away from me, but one starting in the front and one in the back, they're gonna cross over like this. So it's gonna be a very strong fly. Okay. 
taking the meanest brush and I brush this and now uh, you can see that these fibers don't come out the way that glitz do but they will mix with these uh, uh, hackle fibers and this will be very very translucent which I think is one of the good things on a fly that is tied for clear water and sunny days you like the tail fiber? I think it's nice. It tapers nice. We'll see. Okay, so most of my flies on the big ones I use are flash. On regular fly size flies I use our angular HD. Here I'm gonna use only our angel hair and I'm gonna take just a few strands and put them uh, under the wing. And you have to be careful with the angel hair, especially when you put it in under the wing. Because this is the worst material there is to tangle with hooks. So if you do this first angel hair too long, it will for sure tangle uh, together with your hook. So when I taper this, I look where I have my hook. It's going to be about one centimeter behind here. And I take this and I taper and I taper down. So this angel hair is going to be shorter than the tail. If I have one or two, that's too long here. I can do that afterwards. Okay, so colors on the Green Highlander. Many people think it's only yellow and green and gray and brown on top. Um, there is a bit of orange with the tippet feathers in a classic uh, Green Highlander. When I fish my Green Highlanders, or used to, I was always putting a little bit of um, orange in them. On the Greenlander, I don't. I go with the, with the green, yellow and green, and top it up with a dark wing over wing a little roof and i brush through the yellow part make sure now to not take too much i try to do uh, most of the wing with the yellow and green with the green here is going to be the the biggest part and the shortest wing to get a nice taper is the first one and spread it out Make sure you get it down using half the diameter of the tubing and cut. And try to keep it as clean as possible. I complain all the time when I tie here for you guys that I don't see shit. Well, that's because you the light is on that side, but I will try not to. Okay, so let's do uh, a little more angel hair. Fewer fibers, but these here I can tie them in a bit longer. Because these ones gonna will, will be kept away better from the hook. And they're going to mix with my, with my hair. And what I do is that I spread it. So it's about half a centimeter before I tie it in. So I don't get all the fibers one place. And I do one turn and double back and tie in. Looks so it's good. And I taper. Here I tapered the same length about as the longest fibers. And then green. And there are so many green colors on the green island, uh, green highlander it should be grass green uh, i prefer to do like a a, a brighter green uh, i uh, when i dye it myself i use lime and green highlander 
brush it through, make sure this hairline is longer, but also a bit bigger than the yellow. Put it in. I've already decided the sides of the fly with the tube because I want to have the hook in the center. So if the yellow is slightly bigger, the green needs to be uh, longer, sorry, needs to be longer to get the taper. And then I will top it up with a root that's even longer. And I tie it in. Before I let go, I can put my fingers back, use my thumbnail, press this out on the sides. So I get a wide fly and cut it off. And um, I don't know why green flies are so good on clear water, but they are. And um, to me, the clearer the water, the brighter the green. Okay, so. I could put a little more of uh, uh, angel hair on top here, but the, as you can see, the wing is almost done. And I see I already now have a good taper here. Uh, now I'm gonna decide what going to use. If I'm gonna do this with a uh, classic way where I can tie down the hackle, I will use um, a half turbo. If I'm gonna do it with a hackle that's wound around, uh, I'm gonna do it with the turbo. But here on the, on when I do the half turbo, I need to think because the half turbo doesn't have much space, and I need to have uh, very little material to go into the actual cone. So what I do, I put most of the wing, meaning that I will take a bit of black. That will be the top of this and uh, I will save so I can put in a little bit of black after I've done my hackles. Very soft hair this time. And the thing is that I normally say that the best hair should be on the top. Brush it through and you can see how it untangles when I pull it over the brush like this and it's much easier for me to spread this so I get few fibers it's only gonna be a little roof on top of this fly I'm not gonna turn this into a black fly I'm tied in fairly close here you can also see what I do with this finger here I can steer the thread so when the thread comes close to the finger I can press this and push it front or open up so I can just winding on and moving this finger uh, to have these being put in different places. Okay, does it look good? I think maybe a little more on your side there. Like that and cut off. Try to keep clean, makes it easier and makes uh, it easier to put a cone on and, and a more beautiful fly. Okay, so now I've, I've come this far uh, and I can do this different now. I can uh, either <clears throat> put the hackle on and uh, uh, then put the rest of the wing in the sides. But I can also do this. I can take my jungle cock and put them on right now. And uh, maybe you saw the fly I had here. On this one, I used a uh, jungle cock that's died. Uh, on this one here now, I'm gonna use a natural one. And the most important thing is that I do it with a Cytus and legal jungle cock. Okay. And again, back to producers, they are soon here now. I'm, and I'm not going to start tying here with our substitute before 
I can actually send it to you guys shortly. If I say before Christmas, it's not going to be before Christmas, so I better shut up. Take the jungle cock on my side, start with that one. Make sure it's about as long as uh, the tubing, the medium tubing. Tie it in, make sure it looks good. Uh, get the right proportions. Take the other one. Here it's interesting because I have a jungle cock that curves this way that should actually sit on my side. But what I do is that I pull this on my fingernail and I change the feather to be formed so it will sit perfect on your side there. Looks good. Look at the wing, look from above and um, tie it in. Normally I just move my vice here, but uh, I get it out of focus for you guys then. It's good, maybe a little too high up, so I pull it down a little bit with my nail. Looks okay. Cut it off. Then it's time for the hackle. And I'm going to use one of these super soft, um, small, uh, soft tackle feathers. Let's see what I have if I have something that's better than the other one. That's too small. This one looks good. Here we go. And what I want this to do is I want it to add a bit of motion. This was a little dirty clean it but it's got some really nice fibers to it look at this and take away uh, the bad part the one that's tangling this is what I need and I create a little triangle here and I cut it off using support with my fingers like this and I uh, tie it in. Take this and uh, one thing I can do first, almost forgot here, is to put a little bit of glue right on the wing here. And the big difference is that these fibers, no matter how many fish you're gonna catch on this one, they can't slip. They uh, will be glued together with the thread. Then I take this, pull the fibers out, try not to glue everything together now. And I uh, double this feather, meaning all fibers coming uh, one side of the center of the feather. Hold them back and tie in. Like that. And since I've been using so long jungle coke, I have a couple that needs to be pulled back. You can see even if I put the huckle in afterwards, the jungle cocks are seen the way they should be. Uh, now I can take a little bit of angel hair, nasty, rusty. Just one or two strands here. Here we go. Don't have much nasty rusty here. It's the color, maybe the color I use most. But um, they're hopefully they're long enough for me. Couple of these. Pull them in. Make sure they follow the wing. And now I'm careful with thread, only one turn and then double back. Um, like that. And as I said, I can take now a little bit of black hair to turn this into what I call the classic style, uh, meaning that uh, 
the hackle is divided and tied down on the sides and, and under the fly. And you can see how I work this to be very, very few strands and uh, make sure they are longer than what I had before. Press them down, make sure that the thread is put tight. I say tight, it wasn't tight. Now it's tight. Tight down to the hackle, dividing the hackles and cut it off close. And then I take peacock and I use a dyed peacock. This is dyed green. And uh, I think the ones that are not bleached are more beautiful. And to be honest with you, they are not that durable. And I will try to tie in all at the same time. Lost them there. So uh, I normally do three to five on a uh, fly here that are going to be a sunshine fly. I want it to be translucent, and but I only wanted to have a little bit of a back. I think the tree tree is good enough and I look so I get them to be as long as the longest fiber of the wing and I tie them in all at the same time. Sometimes they have a tendency one is uh, swapping over or switching over so you get it to not follow the way it should. But that looks good. And then I cut this down. And a um, couple of fibers there pointing the wrong way. One turn, hold it down. Uh, time for a cone. And I'm gonna do uh, extra small, half turbo, chartreuse metallic. Good thing with the half turbos is that they help balancing the fly. And uh, since I cut a little an angle on that one, it's easy to just slide it on. It's called fits because it all fits together. Little bit of glue, you support, put the glue on the side in front of the thread. If I have very little, if I need very little thread, I can back down before I pick up the glue so I don't get too much thread there because there's little space there. A few seconds, pull it down, press it down close and I take the fly out of the vise. Make sure this is now straight and pulled down close so there's no thread seen here because the thread will break. Two, three millimeters. It's the closest green I found. Big ugly one, but it will melt this like this to hold the little cone for me. And doing it the right way, I get a little hole there. Wait a few seconds for it to be uh, ready. Okay, green lander. One of my absolute favorite flies for clear water. Did it turn out good? I think it did. I look underneath if I have one or two a strands of angel hair that is too long. I try to take them away because I don't want them to start mixing uh, and tangling my hook. Broad, looking underneath against the light, very translucent, and still with a good drop form.
pretty good, I think. Most of the time I type flies like this, they end up somewhere where I don't want to fish them. But this, I think I will fish this. It'll look good. Okay, so uh, we're ready with this. What did I say? 34th film. Um, and doing 34 films on salmon flies, where most of them are the, the, the tied beyond the same principles, why do you need all this? Is it, are we absolutely crazy? Did the fish care? Uh, last week I tied this. Will there be uh, fish taking this and not that? Or will they all grab everything? My experience from what rivers around the world more than 6,000 days is that the fly is all the fish will see. The fly is super important. Just a few millimeters uh, in length or different colorations, bit more or less flash, more or less uh, translucent, softer materials, better balance. It can make a hell of a difference. Either you get the fish or you don't. So <clears throat> I carry thousands of flies and I have great beliefs in this. And um, since you've been watching all this long film, I think maybe you do too. So uh, ending up with the coffee, is it still warm? Should be in our good cup. Uh, thanking you for watching and saying that Next time, we're going to do something completely different. And I normally say that, but next time it is going to be something completely different. So, okay, stay strong and tie on, tie on and um, see you uh, right before New Year's.